Hi, in this video, you will learn how to monitor and assure network performance using CA Unified Infrastructure Management, formerly known as CA NIMSOFT Monitor. Having 360 network visibility is crucial to today's network-driven business and anything less can have costly bottom line implications. CA Unified Infrastructure Management provides complete network visibility to assure that the highest levels of business service quality are achieved. Let's take a look. From what you can see on my monitor, the solution provides many different ways to view dashboards, reports, and custom dashboards. But with network monitoring, typically we start with discovery. So let's go down that path. I've opened up what we call the Unified Service Manager, and it has several different groups that have been defined. But before we define any groups or we explore that avenue, let's take a look at Discovery. Discovery is a crucial part of network monitoring. And as you can see, I have different, several different locations where I can run Discovery from. Importantly, I just want to go to Actions, select Discovery Wizard. Here I can select different locations to run my Discovery from and launch the wizard. The wizard actually walks me through adding in WMI metrics if I need to or Linux, Unix type operating system credentials or SNMP and with network monitoring typically that's what we're talking about unless the vendor provides an API. Now in this case version 1, 2, or 3 as well as IPv4 or IPv6 support. Your IP address ranges adding in a new range, adding in a single IP address, or adding in additional ranges or masks depending on your environment and what's being discovered. And don't forget, select the different credentials that you've entered so that when those devices are discovered, the product can log in and extract information from them pertaining to the system itself as well as pertaining to performance monitoring. And then finally setting up a schedule. Do you want to run discovery now? Do you want to schedule it to be run at a certain time? Or do you want to schedule a reoccurring event? And of course you can come back and change these settings after discovery has been run. Once you hit finish discovery launches and it gives you a status bar as well as starts to fill <clears throat> the pie chart here in view and you can actually select different components within the pie chart in order to see what's been discovered. And from that perspective if you just go to one of your discovered locations it'll give you the inventory list you can actually export out that inventory so that you can import it into other products as well as it'll reflect what set of credentials were used in order to log in to gather more information. So that's your discovery. From a discovery perspective though, now you've got individual groups that you can create and groups can be built in many different ways and many different levels. From a group perspective, I can go ahead and then view my relationships because discovery is run so it's generated a network connectivity map and I have several different ways of viewing the map depending on what my preference might be. But the idea is having the ability to zoom in and select the device in order to see more detail is the benefit of your topology map as well as root cause analysis. I can expand the view, I can scroll through and see all the individual IP addresses as well as all the different physical addresses and if I select show alarms it'll take me to the, to the alarm view. Also selecting a link to tell me the different device names, their class, their index information, the name of the interface, the type of interface, the speed, validating any mismatches, mismatches in speed um, that might be contributing to discards or errors or packets in the queue. And that's a quick look at a topology map generated off of your discovery. Now in this case I've got Cisco devices, a Cisco infrastructure folder, and then different folders representing different types of devices. There's different ways of presenting this information. Um, this is one way. Another way that our customers prefer is the badge view because they can have this on a large LCD screen and hopefully everything is the color green. But when it changes, 
having that ability to again navigate into the different badges in order to see more information pertaining to a specific device. And in this case, I've navigated down into a specific Cisco device. We see the iOS version, everything right down to its serial number. We also see performance information that's being collected. But before we hit that, let's talk about maintenance. Because from this web portal, you can put any device into maintenance mode, once only or reoccurring events. And as a result, polling still continues. It's still collecting data, but no alerts and events are generated during that maintenance period. I can actually pop this view out in order to see more detail. I can select spikes within the environment, or I can zoom into an area in order to see more detail. I can see the raw data that's being been collected and when it's been collected and what my polling interval is. So a lot of functionality here as well as that ability to look at last week, last month, any time frame you want because by default CA Unified Infrastructure Management stores one year's worth of raw data. So now I've got information here and of course what do I need to see? Well alarms I have several different alarms and they require an action. So I can go to actions, accept the sign, unassign, acknowledge, launch URL action. So now if I want to go to the Cisco to support page in order to get support on this device or an error message, I can do that. Simple enough and they're easy to add so that they're available to all of your users. In fact, if I select more and go to metric, now I'll actually see a graph that represents when that alarm actually was triggered. And the advantage of this is being able to see what happened previously or prior to the alarm being triggered, helping me historically look at um, the past in order to hopefully prevent this issue in the future. Now if I hop back to, hop to my, um, let's say my system folder, I also have all the individual interfaces on this switch. It allows me to select a specific interface and navigate in to see more detail. Out of the box again, errors, discards, process packets, packets in the queue, and that ability again to select spikes, to view any data. Um, interestingly enough, how this day begins at 8 o'clock and packets per second start to increase and start to decrease about 5 p.m. But if I want to look at what happened over the last week, is this a reoccurring event? I can do that as well. And it's pretty obvious that it is a reoccurring event. Now, let me hop back for a second because what's important is being able to see all the information that's collected out of this product. So now I've selected a different switch and I'm going to go to the metrics tab because from the metrics tab, we can look at all of the different metrics that are being collected, whether it's CPU utilization, last five seconds, last minute, last five minutes, or maybe it's fan status or power supply or temperature or voltage, or your memory utilization. Or it might be concerning your system and your buffers, large, huge, small buffers, buffers missed. And then from a metric family perspective, you've got more detail. And what I mean by more detail is, how is this information being collected? How easy is it to run discovery within the CA Unified Infrastructure Management Tool and automatically start monitoring the environment? Well, that's where the SNMP collector comes into play because it has what we call metric families. And metric families have been imported, installed into the probe so that when discovery runs, it discovers the environment and all of the different vendors that you have out there and starts monitoring different metrics automatically out of the box. It has specific default metrics that it will monitor and then you can add in your own custom monitors. What's nice about this is I'll go ahead and select this switch again and you can see my SNMP v2 my community string but when I navigate down into the device, it'll show me each individual metric that I can potentially monitor and set a threshold on or just collect. I don't have to generate alarms on these. I can just collect the metrics so that I can look at them in a trend report. And I'll show you how that's done. From CPU, from a CPU perspective, 
I'm going to navigate down to thresholds and we see many different metrics that I'm collecting both the data as well as the alarms on generating alarms so if I just look at CPU utilization we'll find we're publishing the data which means we're storing it in the back end so we're probably polling this every 60 seconds or maybe every five minutes and we're publishing alarms and how are those alarms being generated well, I have different thresholds, a warning threshold, a minor threshold, a major threshold, and a critical threshold. So this is um, dark blue, yellow, orange, and red. If I don't want to see these lower end alarms, I just have to remove those. Additionally, I'm now generating alarms, but maybe I want to compute against the baseline, and I want to do that dynamically. And what the product now will do is look at the values that are being collected and compare them against baselines and you've got three different algorithms scalar percent standard deviation if I select percent you'll see that we've filled in by default metrics or percentages that would generate alarms and again if I don't want to receive these lower level alarms I can just remove those so in this case the last metric that was collected if it is 20% higher than my baseline, it's going to generate this major orange alarm. Make sense? And of course, with standard deviation, we also give you default metrics, but you can modify them as you wish. That's a quick look, keeping in mind that whether it's ICMP ping, SNMP queries, the reception of SNMP traps, the monitoring of syslogs, or logging into network devices via the vendor's API. CA's Unified Infrastructure Management Tool allows that functionality. In closing, CA Unified Infrastructure Management is not just a standalone point network monitoring software. It helps your team ensure you're delivering an optimal customer experience by monitoring the availability and performance of all your services, applications, and technologies both inside and outside your data center via a single unified and comprehensive IT monitoring solution. It provides monitoring support for more than 140 out-of-the-box technologies and end-user response time testing across your data center and the cloud. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.